Hey, good morning, everybody. Um, my name is Chase Romano. Uh, I'm a data scientist with Snowflake under our professional services workload solutions team. Uh, I travel to different customers and implement machine learning models in Snowpark with the Snowflake ecosystem. Uh, today, I'm going to talk to you about parallelizing your hyperparameter tuning in Snowpark. So hopefully, I have some data scientists here who are used to doing some hyperparameter tuning. And today, I'm going to talk to you about how to really speed that up um, in Snowpark using user-defined table functions. So today, what we're going to talk about, I'm going to do a brief intro into just what is hyperparameter tuning for some people that may not know what it is. And then we're going to talk about the key difference between using stored procedures for model training and also using user-defined table functions and when to use each one. So we're going to do a quick demo on training inside of a single node store procedure. But then as a data scientist, what you would really want is multi-node training. And we're going to do that inside of a user-defined table function. So why is hyperparameter tuning important? So what hyperparameter tuning allows your data scientists to do, you can tweak your model for optimal performance. And this process is essential in machine learning because it helps you choose appropriate hyperparameter values, which is crucial for success. So when you get a good, balanced choice of hyperparameter results, you then get more accurate models and better model performance. Now, why do we want to do this in a UDTF? And also, we're going to talk about some different techniques. So grid search is going to go through all combinations of your hyperparameters. So once you start defining your hyperparameters and you give it the range or the list of values in each hyperparameter, that can grow to be a giant list of hyperparameters. And so when grid search does, is it's actually going to go through every single combination, which can be very slow inside of a store procedure that is single node. Random search is a way that you can randomly search your grid of hyperparameters, so you don't need to go through all of them. But in that case, you don't get to go through every combination, so you may not find the actual best combination of hyperparameters. And then Bayesian optimization, which I'm not going to go over in detail today, it can be done in Snowpark, but that is an iterable type of optimization. So that will not make use of UDTFs because it will not be able to run in parallel since it makes use of the previously trained models uh, in the algorithm. So the key differences in store procedures versus UDTFs. I commonly see when I go to customers that they're only using store procedures for model training. And I get why. It's easy. You can take your pandas code. You can take your, your models. You can wrap them in the store procedure. And they execute very easily on Snowpark. But the downside to store procedures is that they are single node. So in a lot of cases, this is fine. But in hyperparameter tuning, when I'm going through hundreds, if not thousands, of different iterations of models, if I have to wait one by one by one, that can take hours. I've actually seen a customer training a model on hyperparameter tuning that took days. It took more than 24 hours. Well, with user-defined table functions, you can actually access all the nodes on the warehouse and distribute that model training on partitions defined by that user. Now, there's tons of other cases where this is very, very useful. But in hyperparameter tuning, when I'm doing a grid search, I can actually run all of these models in parallel across the threads on the warehouse. So this tremendously speeds up model training. So I'm going to go through creating a user-defined table function. And the first one that I'm going to show you before I switch over to my laptop for the live demo is creating the UDTF that is actually going to create our distribution of hyperparameters, or our table of hyperparameters. And so in this UDTF, I'm initializing a random parameter grid. And in my process, I'm telling it, I'm going to be feeding it a dictionary. And I'm going to be using parameter sampler to actually create the sample of hyperparameters. And in my end partition, I want to output my different hyperparameters. And if you're a data scientist, you're probably familiar with these. Bootstrap, max depth, max features, and so on. So what this UDTF is going to do is I'm going to give it a dictionary of hyperparameters. And it's going to output a table of all of the different combinations of hyperparameters. So then I register this UDTF. And the input types are going to be a variant type and an integer type. And that variant type is going to be a column in Snowflake 
that is a dictionary of all of my hyperparameters in one column, and then the integer type is going to be how many hyperparameter combinations do I want. If I make this a giant number, make it an infinite number, it's going to give me all combinations. But if I want to do random search, I can say, hey, give me 32 random combinations of hyperparameters so I don't have to go through all of them and speed this up. And so I created awesome UDTF, which is just going to be my user-defined table function. And I'm now going to create my parameter grid. And I'm going to put that in a Snowpark data frame as my parameter grid, which is going to be a variant type. And so now that I have a Snowpark data frame where I have a column that is my parameter grid, I can now run my UDTF, and I get another Snowpark data frame that is every single combination of these hyperparameters with a hyperparameter ID. So by doing this, I now know that out of all of that parameter grid, I had 288 different unique combinations of hyperparameters. And by me putting a million, I know that it's just going to tell me the max. If I were to do random search, I can specify maybe I only want 64 combinations. I'm not dramatically worried about my accuracy. I may take a tiny hit. But if I randomly search through 64 combinations, I'm probably bound to find at least a decent one. And it's going to run way faster. I can now change and say, hey, only give me 64 combinations of hyperparameters. So I'm actually going to hop over to my laptop now. And I'm going to demo using, you can go ahead, yeah. I'm going to demo using a UDTF and showcasing the benefits versus using a store procedure. And we should see uh, a, a dramatic difference in the runtime. So I'm going to hop over to one of my favorite notebooking tools to use, which is Hex. And I'll be working in a Hex project. So I'm going to start with doing a, snow, uh, a stored proc with a uh, Snowpark optimized to show you the key differences. But prior to doing it with a Snowpark optimized warehouse, I actually ran this on a regular, just large warehouse. And you can see that for me to tune a hyperparameter uh, to do the grid search cross-validation took me 47 minutes. That is a really long time. I do not want to sit at my laptop and wait for my model to train for 47 minutes when I'm using a tool like Snowflake. Might as well just use my laptop at that point. So after switching to a Snowpark optimized warehouse, I do get a dramatic increase in performance down to 11 minutes. So what I want to show you about you know, also using store procs and UDTFs, as a data scientist, these Snowpark optimized warehouses comes with 16 times the compute and memory of your other warehouses, of your standard warehouses. So if you ever find your model training to be extremely slow, or you need more memory, hop on over to a Snowpark optimized warehouse, and you'll see a dramatic increase in your runtime. But even to me, 11 minutes to run just a, a forest model is going to be still a little long when I have the availability of larger warehouses and parallelized compute. So what I want to show you is what this actually looks like in the code for the store procedure. As a data scientist, if I want to run models and store procedures, sometimes it can be as simple as lift and shift of your code. I can take Panda's code. I can take a model that I'm doing here, which is a grid search cross-validation of a random forest model, random forest classifier model. And none of this is Snowpark. This is all pure Python running in a Python secure sandbox on the same warehouses that my analysts can run SQL. I don't need to choose a Python warehouse. I literally can wrap all of this inside of a store procedure and run a model and store that model to a stage. Now, when I run it with a Snowpark optimized warehouse, it, like I said, it is a little bit faster. And in the output, I do get my optimal hyperparameters alongside the accuracy of these hyperparameters. But again, let's see if we can make this a little faster. Well, when I use a medium warehouse on the store procedure, this one took 11 minutes. I went ahead and changed it and said, hey, Chase told me if I make my warehouse larger, it's going to run faster. I said that for UDTFs. 
And this is something to help with cost optimization if you're a manager and you, you, know, you manage a team of data scientists. Please know that when you're training models and store procedures, I just switched to a large. I did not get any more performance increase out of going from medium to large, but I just spent double the amount of money. Okay? This is something that I want you guys to know about store procedures is no matter the size of your warehouse, it is going to be single node when it comes to model training, and that's why UDTFs can help with that. Now, again, I'm using a medium. You may think, well, medium should have more than one node. Well, Snowpark optimized warehouses, the medium warehouses start at one node. They just have lots more memory. So knowing that we now say, OK, well, I'm going to stick to medium Snowpark optimized warehouses for store procedure training. That's going to get you the best performance at the best price. But what if speed is more important to me? What I'll do next is I'm going to do a train test split instead of cross-validation for a user-defined table function. And so what I'll do here is I'm going to create my UDTF that's going to actually cross-join my combination of hyperparameters with my data set. And so therefore, I'll have my entire data set in combination with all of my different hyperparameters. And what I can do with a user-defined table function is I can partition on that hyperparameter ID and say, hey, for every hyperparameter ID, split this up to its own vCPU inside that warehouse. So as I scale up, I have a lot more vCPUs, and I can run hundreds of models very, very, very quickly. A little secret to this is inside the UDTF, I can do an if not self process first row. And what this will do is, once it sees that combination of hyperparameters once in the UDTF, it will not run those again, because again, we did that cross joint. So it will now run them individually every single set of hyperparameters for the entire data set. And so when I call this UDTF, it's going to intake my combination of hyperparameters, my data set, which was six features, and it was 40,000 records. And the key to UDTFs is, what do we want each vCPU to be partitioned by? I want every single model to be separated by the separate combination of hyperparameters. So in this case, I'm telling my UDTF, hey, each hyperparameter combination, run that model on its own vCPU. And so here, I get a table output, and I ordered it by the accuracy, and I have the combinations of the hyperparameters. And so I can see now that hyperparameter ID 228 with those combinations had the highest model accuracy of about 95%. And so I can now take these, register them in the stored proc. The stored proc will run one model very quickly. I'll register that model to a stage. I can now use it as a UDF for model inference as much as I want. And instead of taking 47 minutes, we took it down to 11 with Snowpark optimized. I actually ran this on a standard warehouse. And we got it down to 3 minutes and 52 seconds on a standard warehouse using a user-defined table function. As a data scientist, I will tell you, UDTFs are a very neat trick to parallelize your model training and speed them up. In this demo, I know I'm talking about hyperparameters, but what I really want you to take home from this is UDTFs for model training. They are very, very efficient for time series modeling. If we have products where we have 500,000 products that all follow different seasonality, different trends, and I want to run 500,000 models, if I do that in a store proc, it's going to take days. In a UDTF, it can take minutes. Because all you got to do is scale up, run your model, and in this warehouse, I have an auto timeout of 60 seconds. So it's literally going to scale out, run this, and then shut down automatically for you and have your models ready to forecast. All right. I hope you enjoyed. If you want to talk to me, I will be over here for a little bit. Again, I'm Chase Romano. If, if you think your company can help from professional services with a specific data science engagement, so what my team do will come. We will train your data scientists on using Snowpark in the op most optimal way. And thank you for having me today.